Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Nice to see everybody here. Just give everyone just a couple minutes uh, to uh, creep in here. Sensor DJ. Hi, Voltar from Chile. Well, hi. Hi from America. God bless you. <sighs> Good evening. I hope everyone's doing well. You guys look great. Hello from Sweden. Oh, nice. Very nice. Let's see. Oh, I've turned all my alerts and stuff off here. Let's see. Okay. Now, just to, you know, preface everything that I'm about to say, this is going to be about maybe six minutes, ten minutes, but a lot of people have been asking about the new two-chip stuff. How does it install? Is it difficult? Is it something, you know, that I can do? Um, we're going to talk about it. We're going, to, we're going to give you a little tease here. Now, keep in mind, some of these are prototypes. They're not populated boards, but I've been asked this so much, I thought I would go ahead and address it because things are happening and this stuff will be out quicker than quicker than you realize quicker than I realize um, good good evening hello we need a European reseller yes I am going to be listen okay we'll, we'll get into Europe okay we're going to get into pal territory let's just give everyone a few minutes here to, to jump in hello from Mexico de Voltar hello Albert hello buenos dias senor senor buenos dias Ah, okay. Just a, just just a couple more a couple more minutes. Okay, just a couple more minutes. This is so exciting! Woo, baby! Ooh, oh! Ah. Quebec. Ah, some relatives. Hello, Francis. Nice to see you. You need a South American reseller. Listen international stuff I'm working on. That has been just as much of a focus. Well, not as much, but it's been a very high priority for me to get these things outside the United States. Um, I'm working on it, and it's going to happen because I've put too much effort into PAL territory. Hello! Hello! Uh, Cloak Sentinel. Top Hat Skull. Happy early Christmas Eve, Voltar and everyone. Happy Merry early Christmas to you too, friend some light in here oh yeah we got a little light okay I think we've got enough people in here now so I, I'm going to also cut this and put this on twatter later here's what we have the two chip SNES stuff works on revision after revision after revision after revision after revision and guess what you pal people you pal people even have support. Every two chip SNES is supported. This has been a very, very arduous task for me. And I have sent and simplified a lot of the circuitry and the design of this into a small, modular, codified design that will, that will streamline this for every revision. Let's talk about it. Let's start. Let us start with launch models. I'm going to turn this volume down just a bit. Now, we have a launch model SNES Super Famicom mainboard. This is the HVC CPU01. You can see that right down here. Now, this is a noisy bastard, and it's a piece of crap. We can fix all of this. Now, keep in mind what you're about to see are not populated boards, but I'm just showing you how what this process entails. In order to do the edge enhancer to clean up the video lines so that they're sharper, what we do is we turn this upside down like this. We'll be working in this area of the main board right here. I'm going to zoom into that. Just like this. That's that's pretty good. Now we're going to zoom in here nice and tight. What we're going to do, I just want to take this. This is an 
Edge Enhancer Interposer, designed for launch model systems. Now this does two things. The first thing that it does is it interfaces our Edge Enhancer PCB with the active electronics to the SNES, but it also, you'll notice, we have these cutouts here with these castellated edges. I'm going to put this down just to show you guys how this rolls. Just like that. Now, you'll notice, let me get out a sound, let me get out a pointing device. This is as good of a pointing device as any. You'll notice that we have these capacitor footprints that are very close to the capacitors on board. That is because the interposer is also acting as an additional ground plane as well as an additional decoupling zone for all of these chips. Now, all of these capacitors, C94, C93, C91, C92, they are all of the decoupling capacitors for the PPU2, for the PPU1, for the CPU, and for the RAM. We are, without you having to stuff any additional capacitors to clean up the, the, the rails of this because the SNES has terrible decoupling and that's something that I've addressed here too. But in, or in order for you to not have to worry about doing that, we have additional decoupling on board the interposer so that you don't have to go and stuff caps across different chips, across different pins. I've done all that. You set this in, you install it, that's it. Now, that's the interposer. The second part of this is right here. Now, these chips are protected because I'm afraid I'm already starting to be cloned just by some of the by some of the information that I've prevented or presented present not prevented presented. So all of this stuff is protected, but nonetheless, this is the this is the edge enhancer. This is the little doodad that makes it all work. I have consolidated this and with the help of Mike Chi and and Furtech and a bunch of other very smart people um, I've come up with a way to consolidate this design in a manner that will let me put this in anything and everything and it's quite magical. Now how do you install the edge enhancer? It's very simple. The edge enhancer installs onto the interposer just like this. Now you'll notice that we have some castellated edges here. I'm sorry if the if the uh, glob top has uh, uh, blocked a little bit of that but you can see that's it. You just take the castellated edges, line them up to the fingers of the interposer, solder across, you're done. This is all it is. This is all it is. That's the entire, that is the entire edge enhancer installation. That's all it takes. I don't recommend this. I don't recommend stopping here because you're still going to have a tremendous amount of noise. You're going to have a tremendous amount of visual distortion and your amplitude the SNES just doesn't output good RGB. What good is sharpening the video if you don't have clean video? Well, that's where the other component comes into play, right here. This is the SNES RGB 2 chip bypass. Now, this has been designed specifically for 3 chip architecture. You may say 3 chip, I say 2 chip. Go fuck yourself. So, here's what we have. This is very simple. If you're familiar with the N64 RGB and the SNES RGB that I already offer, this is much easier than that. The first thing that you have to do before installing this though is you just got to remove a couple of components. Just like one chip bypasses, you just remove a couple resistors and caps. But ultimately, this fits into place like this. You're done. And sol solder that in, but look very carefully. What do we have here? What, what the hell is this? Well, I'll tell you what this is. See this little footprint here that's empty? This is for an FPC interconnect. What we're going to be doing is, well, wait a minute, what the hell is this down here? <gasps> We've got the same FPC interconnect way down here. What's up with that? That is because I told you this was wireless. Even if you're going to do an RGB bypass, it's wirelessly done. We take our RGB in, or our RGB signaling from the interposer we route it through this FPC, and this FPC is carefully routed all the way up through here, and you just lock in the FFC cable from end to end. That is the um, entire procedure for the edge enhancer, decoupling the power system, or de decoupling the power, the, the voltage supplies, decoupling all the chips so you don't get all those transient spikes. 
that is the entire procedure for bypassing, and that is the entire procedure for connecting the bypass to the edge enhancer. That that's that's everything. That's all it is. Yes, that is right. It's Voltar, the biggest man-child in gaming. I'm not a gamer, but thank you. Um, the launch model is very similar to every other revision. So we'll pull out... Oh, I guess it really doesn't matter, but RGB 01s, RGB, um, that's another RGB 01. We have an, uh, let's see, GPM, A, what am I looking for? I'm looking for something here that, I've, oh, here we go. So, not everybody has a launch model, and there are about 50 different revisions. We have all kinds of SNES systems here. Every other revision is going to be utilizing the same interposer. And this this interposer is designed, as you can see, for GPM, RGB, and APU 0X, that means 01 to 02 revisions. This interposer is desi designed to cover everything else, and it is just a matter of bringing the interposer in. We had to remove some um, some solder masks, some tinting over these three vias, and then it's just a matter of bringing this over, lining this up until you see light, just like that. Boom! Perfect alignment. Solder those in. Once again, solder the, de the, the decoupling capacitors and these castellated edges back in. And once again, for every other revision, it's just a matter of lining up that edge enhancer. It's modular. Line it up, solder it in, you're done. If you want the RGB bypass, it's no different. We have an, we all, we'll have an FFC cable that can come out of here and right up here after we remove a few components. Oh, look, I didn't remove the multi-out from this one, so I can just slip this over the pins like that. Boom. Solder across. Connect your FPC and boom. You have a solderless, or I'm sorry, you have a wireless connection and your bypass is done without tinning, pre-tinning, stripping any wire. Won't it collide with Bordy's multi-norm PCB? Okay, so here's the thing. I don't really... Don't take this the wrong way. I don't care about PAL consoles and 50 and 60 hertz. I understand that people like those switchless mods where you can do 50 hertz and you can switch to 60 hertz. This is just the way it is. I know that I designed for the PAL system, and let's talk about PAL. Let me find a PAL board. Hold on, hold on, I've got a PAL board here. Okay. This is the PAL SNES. You'll know that by its model number, SNSP-CPU-01. Now, I just finished designing this a little while ago, a bit ago. The PAL systems will use a third interposer. Now the third interposer, let me bounce the light off this just a little bit so that it's a little less shimmery. That's pretty good. Now the PAL interposer, let me get this out of the way, hold on. Oh god, it broke it all. There we go, okay. That's better. So the PAL interposer is going to fit like so. That's pretty much in line. That's This is a paper prototype, but just to show you, PAL prototype is designed to fit in just like this, quite nicely. Now, from what I've seen from the uh, Super CIC mods, they start, I don't know what I did with my pointer, they connect to the cartridge connector and they come down. Now, for NTSC systems in my country, it is what it is. Like, I don't care if somebody, I'm not interested in supporting mods that will, um, frequency convert a an American system or a Japanese system to PAL. I think that's useless, quite frankly, so I'm not interested in that. Nonetheless, for PAL systems, I have designed this interposer to hopefully accommodate uh, 
most of those super CIC mods. Now, I know that the uh, a couple of them, they connect here to the cartridge connector, and they come down about this far, about where you see my X-Acto knife. So this interposer and those super CIC mods, they shouldn't, there shouldn't be any sort of conf confliction, period. Like, there should be no... One should not impede the other. Where people, where, where I see American systems being imported, I see that the, um, the, the, the circuitry for the, for the video lines, it's a lot higher up than the PAL systems. I couldn't accommodate that even if I wanted to. So unfortunately, the Super CIC, Super CIC mods, some of them would have to be redesigned so that they don't come down as far. That's just the way that is. But PAL people, international people, I'm going to support. Um, like I said, this was just designed a little bit ago. Um, I'm waiting for some prototypes. Man, I've got that green glob cramp all over me. I'm waiting for the production prototypes to arrive, or the engineering samples that I've had that I've submitted. But ultimately, pal people, you're getting support. I'm going to do this. It's done, um, and you will have this available in your country for your uh, pal systems. Now, once again, there is a SNES P CPU 01. And then there's an SNESP-02. I'm pretty sure that the 02 and the 01 are identical. I don't know. This is the only PAL Super Nintendo that I own, so I can't really um, comment on that yet. But I'm having other people verify that for me because I don't want... I don't want... Um, PAL consoles to be a second-class citizen for this. But... Um, that's just the way it is. I mean, look... I don't really have anything else to say, to, to say or show you other than just to, you know, once again tell you, that's the RGB bypass, um, that's the interposer for the edge enhancer, the edge enhancer is modular so I can support all of these different revisions without having 50 different products, um, it saves me, it's, it's efficient for me, it's economical for me, it's economical for you, and the heart, the heart of all of this is in this chip right here just like that that's all it is there that's all there is to this and you I'm just telling you um, if you like the one chip if you like the video output of the one one chip I think you're really going to like this and I I, I know that with with these modifications the one chip uh, people will still they'll still be sought after but I prefer this over a one chip. The people that I've sent this to, I won't speak for them, but I know that I know that they prefer this over a one chip. So I think this is very exciting, and I'm sorry this has taken me so long, but this is this has not been easy. This stuff, this has all not been easy. It's been it's it's been a lot. So that's really all I have for you guys today. I just wanted to show you. I've been asked this a thousand times. How hard is it going to be? How hard is it going to be? But you know what? Regardless of how difficult or easy this is, the fact of the matter is I still have to have documentation prepared. And so for the first for the first little bit, I'm not going to be selling DIY kits. I'm only going to offer installation services. That way I can gather all the data that I need and I can put that data in a very simple to follow wiki and there'll be instructions and thorough documentation because I don't there's a lot here and I need to make sure that I've covered every base because I'm this is not a hobbyist project I want to sell a, a a a product that you can take home just like any of my other stuff you can read the documentation and you can do it and you can you can feel confident doing it so install services initially followed by uh, DIY sales international people um, I would expect by spring or before spring and the next few months these will be in stores somewhere I have not spoken to there's some things that are left yet to be done listen being in America and selling in Europe is fucking horrible I'm just going to tell you it's terrible VAT is a horrible antiquated system and it screws me over it often screws you over and I just, I don't like selling in Europe, so I am working on finding a couple of vendors that I like, that I trust, and um, 
that's not super prioritized right now. Getting this all done is prioritized, but Europe, you're not taking a back seat. I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that you guys can get this. So I hope... I hope that um, this works. Yes, I yes, thank you. I know. <laughs> My milk. <laughs> but what do you guys? Okay, so what? Tell me what you think about this. And yes, this works with Japanese fam Super Famicoms. This works with American SNESs. This will work with European SNESs. All of these systems will ha will be wireless installations. The only thing that you'll be doing. If anything, if you're doing the RGB bypass, which again I recommend, this will be removing a couple of surface mount capacitors and resistors. Just components, well, let's say. So, I would like to know... I would like to know what you think. Like, um, any feedback. I, I Listen. To me, the complexity of this stuff is, is, is coming up with ways to take the complexity out of it for the installer and that's what I've tried to do but I am open with you guys I am open to any feedback that you guys have um, anything any suggestions anything that you'd like to say um, I am just it's 2024 it's going to be 2024 that N64 and SNES stuff I designed almost 10 years ago almost a decade ago wires are great but I just feel like I want to make this is my la this is sort of my send off to the Super Nintendo. This is the last thing that I'm ever going to do to the Super Nin to the Super Nintendo, and I just wanted to make it as simple. I wanted to take all the complexity out of this, and I don't want to make I wanted to make it as easy as possible. That way, everyone has a chance to do this themselves. Sorry, this has taken me a while, and I'll tell you. The, the design before... Hold on. Let's see what I have here. Do I have it out? No, I thought I did. Hold on. Do I have anything here? No. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I was going to show you the initial designs for these things, but, you know, these, this has honestly taken another... This has taken a lot longer than it was supposed to, but before, we had a lot of wires. We had wires. We had to tether the RGB bypass to the interposer, and then I had to make sure that I had good impedance. I mean, I had good impedance control because the DAC is... you got to have a very rigid return supply, and the SNES doesn't have that, and you have to do a bunch of this stuff. Like, I could, Bob could tell you, I mean... Uh, there's been a lot of headache with this, so I thought, you know what, take all the wires off the table. I don't want any wires in this. I want to take care of all of those things, all of those issues with an interposer. These are designed this way. They, they, they have the shape for a specific reason. It's not just because it's supposed to look pretty. It's this large for a specific reason. I needed additional ground plane. I needed, I needed, to, I needed a lot of things to happen. Um, this big son of a bitch right here. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's this size, it, it's this size for a reason. And it's just to take all of the headache out of this. Well, if I knew how to put it in, if I knew how to, you know, you'd think I didn't design this. But it, it's, it's this, it's, it's designed this way for very, for, for, for very precise reasons. And, um, it's been a pain in my ass, but it's done. Now, there are a few things that I'm going to do before launch. Now, naturally, I, I wanted to create a little bit of wiggle room here. So, I have... I have... See, some of these openings, they're just a little bit big. Like, you're supposed to line this up like that. And that's okay. I mean, that's not bad. You need room to sort of manipulate these because sometimes during the wave process, these... Uh, these... Um, these... Um, soldered parts they don't sit center dead center in their uh footprints so i wanted there to be a little bit of a tolerance variance here and that's okay but ultimately i mean it's once you line it all up it's it's pretty darn good like this castellated edge here this is all it's all pretty good but i'm going to tighten that up just a little bit works fine the way it is just a little bit more polish but ultimately i'm um i'm i'm, I'm pleased i'm pleased with everything here 
I think that uh, I think that you guys are going to be pleased. So the color scheme, that's an interesting question. The color scheme for these boards, interposers are going to be blue. And the uh, edge enhancer and the RGB bypass are always going to be red. Now that's just so that I have a nice contrast here and so that you have a nice contrast. So you can, you know, it helps alignment when you have that pop. So the, the contrast lends itself to your eyes for that purpose. But uh, red for the bypass, red for the edge enhancer, and blue always for, the, uh, for all interposers. So that's going to be the sort of the color scheme there. That's what it is. Now, like I said, I wish PAL systems again, because I've been asked a lot about this. Um, I'll t real quick, I designed the PAL stuff so that Super CIC mods would hopefully be accommodated. Um, here's a paper prototype again. Just sort of get this in position. Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy, I've been wanting you my whole life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that is the PAL Interposer. Now, again, I think the uh, quite a few of those Super CIC mods, they don't come down. They don't come down. Yeah, that looks... That's, that's, now, that's in pretty much perfect alignment. I don't think that they come down below, I lost my pointer again, I don't think that they come down below um, this set of resistors here, that are in line here, I don't think so, so you should be okay with uh, a lot of those, um, those CIC mods that connect to the cartridge port, you should be just fine, but again, American systems, I'm not interested in supporting CIC mods for that because they're NTSC systems. Like, I understand if you have a PAL system and you want to frequency convert that between 50 and 60 hertz, but NTSC systems in my country, I'm just, I'm only, I'm, I'm only concerned about systems that aren't um, PAL NTSC selectable. Okay, so, uh, does in case anyone wasn't here, does anybody have any questions concerning any of this? I'm just curious. Like, do any questions, anything you'd like me to talk about um, that I've already discussed that maybe wasn't, you know, you're not clear on or anything you'd like me to talk about again? Thank you so much. Guys, I'm so sorry I've not been reading the Super Chats. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Release. So, people are asking, when is this going to be released? The DIY kits will be released very early in Q1, I think. But the for sure, the um, service installations because i have to gather data on all of this to create documentation for the diyers service installations will begin in january and from those i will create data so i can create comprehensive guides on my wiki and that wiki will then be the installation reference sources for the diy kit so let's hope that the diy stuff early q1 and these will be available for people uh, as a send-in service, send me your Super Nintendo, and I will fix all of it up in January. Europe is happening. I am working on Europe. I've got the Europe design. As I said, you know, this is this is pretty much done. I've got the uh, I got some engineering samples being sent to me, some proto some proto some production prototypes. Once all that checks out, this will be ready to go, and I'll be working with some vendors in Europe to supply this to my European friends. So Europe is absolutely on the table. I've spent a lot of time on this to make sure that you guys, my friends uh, across the pond, have access to a really good Super Nintendo mod, as well as my Japanese friends too. Ah. <sighs> 
this was fun. I hope this answered some questions. Um, oh, why I have the glob? Well, the, I'll tell you why I have the glob tops on everything because there are makers, unfortunately, in this community, and there are makers overseas that love to clone. And I'm telling you from personal experience that I would much rather, at the, probably they're already working on cloning it anyways. There's nothing you can do about that, but I'm not going to give them any help. So that's why you see it's very crude, but I've just, I've just, I've glob topped these chips. That's it. This does include a, um, this does include a $10 FPGA, and um, it also includes a certificate of authenticity by Dr. Michael Chi, who is the uh, connoisseur. He is a connoisseur of $10 FPGAs. So the cost will absolutely be because of the ten dollar FPGA. I'm, you're looking at um, seven hundred and fifty dollars plus tax, plus your kidney. Will it be cheaper for you to get this than to buy a used one chip? Um, it depends. Uh, absolutely, if you're a DIYer. Uh, service installation? Probably, yes. You could... Uh, um, how much are, how much are uh, one chips going for now? One, I mean, known one chips. 150 175 Something to that effect? Oh, yeah. If that's the case, then you could have this installed for... Yeah. Um, this would be less expensive... Than a one chip, and this is also OG chipset, so there are no there are none of those quirks, because even though it's official, the the one chip is much like later revision Genesis, even though they're made by Sega or Rico, they're um, pseudo clones. People hate that. People hate it when you call them clones, but they are. Oh, one chips are seven, uh, seventy to a hundred dollars unserviced. You, you can def then you can definitely buy a. Um, you certainly could buy a kit uh, for that. Yeah, you uh, DIYing this will be cheaper than a, than a one chip. You can buy all of this um, if you're to do the edge enhancer. I'm not releasing. I'm not talking about pricing just yet because I'm not ready to because there's there are a lot of things that play into that. But I can tell you that the interposer, edge enhancer, and bypass, all of this will not cost uh, as much as a an unserviced one chip, if that's the price range. I mean if it, it won't be it won't be any more than an unserviced one chip. I didn't think one chips were $170 to hundred dollars. I thought one chips were at least $150. They are here in my in my neck of the woods. Especially if they say one chip on it. God, those things can go for ridiculous money now. But is it... Po uh, we don't know each other well, but is it possible to test the installation on a PAL, please? Well, you know, just like I told, like I talked about earlier, um, the PAL stuff is in design, and PAL, the PAL Super Nintendo revisions will be supported. SNESP, that stands for PAL... I'm pal's going good. eBay one's fifty nine to two twenty nine. See, that's what I thought. I thought, and if if one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars is sort of like the the rate for a one chip, oh yeah, you can get this done for the you can have this done for the cost less than the cost of a one chip easily. It works with PAL consoles. This, these mods work with PAL consoles. They work with Japanese consoles. They work with American consoles. These work with every American, Japanese, European uh, non-one chip SNES, with the exception of now. This is very important. I don't have 
a $40 million Sharp Super Nintendo Super Famicom television that they sold. I don't have one of those, so I can't reasonably test that. I can't design an interposer for that because I am not going to. Nonetheless, that is the only Super Nintendo derivative or permutation that is not supported. Okay. Let's read some of the chat here. Peter, thank you so much. Peter, did you catch any of this? You want me to? Uh, do you want me to go over th uh, some of this again? Uh, if you missed it, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were here. But I'm back. Um, yes, I will be offering installation services. I'm back. I am back full time on this. This is going to be. This is this is going to be um, almost my full time modding job for the first bit. And as far as installation services, I'm the only one that's going to be offering these initially because this is my design. This is my product, and I want to make sure that people get exactly what they want and I want to make sure that I have everything documented no offense to other modders I'm not saying this to be disparaging other modders a lot of people know how to solder and that's great there's some engineering involved here and there's some math and there's some other things that require just a little bit more than the ability to put solder to tin and solder to board so I am going to have control over this for a bit until I am a hundred percent sure that this is safe to put in hands of people who uh, can solder perfectly fine but don't have to worry about all the different sort of permutations of of, of, the, of the two chip of things that might have to be taken accounted for things that may have to be compensated for i don't suspect any of that's going to happen because i have 50 different versions of this i've got a tub of them over there but ultimately you don't know i need more data i need more data so i'll be doing these exclusively for the first little bit What about, um, well, we can talk about that noise. So, okay, so let me see if I can do this real quick. Um, I'm going to put some pictures up here of my body. Now, mind you, these are going to be, um, these are going to be maybe a little compressed. But hold on just a second here. Let's talk about, let's, 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 let's just forget about sharpening. Let's just talk about noise. Now, what good is it to sharpen a video signal if it's already littered with noise? The thing about the 2-chip SNES is that everything is blurred. So a lot of that noise is like Vaseline. It's just, it's, it's hidden by the blurriness of the output. But some things aren't. Now let me click on this. Now let's look at this for a second together. Now on the left side, on the left side we have... I'm going to blow this up so you guys can really see this. This is a stock SNES. I'm going to blow this up again so you guys can really see this. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. Great. Now, do you see all of this noise? And look between, look in the word fantasy, between the A and the N. Do you see that vertical bar that's going down, 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 all the way down? This is a problem with all two-chip SNESs. Horrible, de horrible decoupling on the board. These chips take big gulps of power. You get all of this transient frequency response that telegraphs into the picture. You can see, look at all the specs. See all the little, wi the little white specs and the light specs of noise? It's terrible. And you have the vertical streaking here. This is just what you can expect from a stock SNES. Now again, we're not talking about the edge enhancer. We're just talking about cleaning up the video. Now look to the right. Now this is an SNES, the same system fitted with the video fixes and that has been properly RGB bypassed with a bypass tailored for the system. We have obliterated that vertical bar, the, the vertical, the, all that vertical noise and shimmering is gone. We have fixed the video amplitude and we have made the picture clean and worthy for edge enhancement. So let's talk about another picture. 
again, we're just comparing noise. We're not talking about, uh, we are not talking about um, sharpening the video line. We're not talking about creating more detail. Um, we're talking about the terrible, clean, unclean video output. Now, this, this, I really don't need to explain this to you guys. It's very clear. Let me zoom this in nicely. Okay, the left side is a stock two-chip SNES. As a matter of fact, I think this is a GPM or... No, this is a launch model. I believe this is just a very unfortunate launch model. Now, you can clearly see the vertical noise. I want to really blow this up. Now, look at the blue sky. Do you see all those fine vertical bands? That's just the CPU and the RAM. High-speed digital pings. Because we don't have good decoupling, and because this is a mixed signal system, meaning we have an analog and a digital component here, all of this noise telegraphs into the picture. It's terrible. Now, this is an unbypassed and unfixed, not edge enhanced system. Let's move over to the right. Same system, same system. Uh, with all the with all the video fixes. Now this doesn't. This is not a bypass system. This is not a system that has. I'm sorry. This is a bypass system, an RGB bypass system with no edge enhancer. But this alone is what the bypass can do for you. And if you just want to bypass your system, because some people enjoy the smeared look of the SNES, you can just do an RGB bypass. And as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, once again, here. Let's just do this. Blue sky on the left, look at the vertical noise. Uh, blue sky on the right, virtually noise free. It's stunning. It's, it's really a tremendous difference. But let's talk about if you only want to bypass, you can just buy the buy. The bypass is it's independent. It's an is an independent product. And let me show you why. The bypass. The bypass has the bypass has once again an FPC connector here, but the bypass also has R, G, and B pads broken out. So if you want to, you don't have to you don't have to edge enhance or have to install the interposer. You can just take these breakouts and connect them to the RGB lines. Just like my SNES RGB, just like my N64 RGB, this bypass is its own independent kit that really is complementary to the edge enhancer. Now, it's its own thing. So you don't have to do everything that you don't have to do all the stuff if you just want cleaner SNES video. Can you see the edging enhancement? Okay, give me just one second. One moment. Okay. What I'm going to show you is the cleanest two-chip SNES that I have that was recapped and that was just, you know, serviced. So let me pull that in and we're going to be comparing it. The stock system is going to be on the left and that same system edge enhanced with no bypass, no, with the bypass is going to be on the right. So let me just bring that in and show you. Okay. Left side, very clean image in terms of uh, no real ghosting, but there's still quite a bit of noise here. So if we click on this, and if you look, if you look in the green bush, I'm going to really push this in. If you look in the green bush, do you guys see uh, in the in the in the highlight here in the green? Um, there's still some visual noise, and there's still some visual distortion. Now, Mario still looks pretty good. The blue box looks a little uh, pretty good. Charging Chuck looks pretty good. But let's move over here, if I can grab it.
That is a bypassed, edge-enhanced SNES. Yes, that is, no, that is not an emulator. That is an edge-enhanced SNES that has been properly bypassed. Something else to look at. Um, look at the ground. See the little white spots in the ground? The lighter spots? See how they kind of trail off? Let me move this over. Now, a couple things here to take note of. If we're, if we're looking at the ground, um, the video, the color of the ground is blown out on the left. On the right, we have corrected the amplitude of the video so that it doesn't clip and highlight, and we've also edge enhanced. If you look at, if you look at the uh, grass, just compare the, j just compare the little, uh, the little uh, light leaves in the background. They lose detail because the DAC isn't fast enough to go from a light color content to a darker color content, and that is why the leaves are so blurry. Uh, on the on the stock system, but if you look at the uh, one uh, not the one chip, but if you look at the two chip, you have perfect clarity. That is the difference. Now again, this is the cleanest. That is the cleanest system. Um, I can show you some more examples. Hold on. Okay, so here's a very classic example of Super Mario World titles, not title screen, but world map. Now, in this example, I'm going to zoom in nicely. It's very easy to see. Let's let's just let's just start with the top. Now, in the in the area around Super Mario, and the and you look at the text for the uh, how many lives you have. Look at Yoshi's house. You can see the noise present in the solid background. It's very obvious. This is a GPM01 revision, and this is again a very clean revision. But this is just really the best you can get. The text, everything here, you can clearly see. Um, the video content. Now, let's move over to the right. Now, the ghosting is gone. The noise is gone. Um, if you look, see, look at the E. Let me just come over here. See Yoshi's house? Look at the E. See how the pixels trail off and you have that slightly shaded, uh, less dark pixel uh, trailing on the edge? And if you look, here's another fun thing to look at. Let me see. My mouse is going crazy. Here we go. Perfect. So once again, if you look at the border where you have the cute little star and the fire symbol and the mushroom, if you look at that border, that tan border, it's really blown out. It's really blown out because the video is, is still, in my opinion, too hot. The amplitude is corrected on the uh, modified two chip, and everything is um, nice and sexy. And you can clearly see the sharpness difference. I mean, if you look at the little waves in the water, like you don't even know what color that's supposed to be because it's just so horrible. Um, let's see. So here we go. So so it's not just a matter of sharpening the video. Sharpening the video is very important, and those differences are profound. But the real magic here is cleaning up. The, the real magic is is all behind cleaning up the video. Let me turn this off. It's about cleaning up the video so that when you sharpen it, you're not cleaning up noise in terms of ex, 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 uh, extenuating it and distinguishing it. You are in accentuating it. You're getting rid of the noise as best you can. You're normalizing the videos as best as you can. You're getting rid of all that vertical bar and vertical interference as best you can, and then apply your um, enhancement. Let's see. Hold on. I think I might have some more here for. You. Would you guys like to see some uh, some more? These are just off the off the cuff here. Let's see. Um, Here's a great example. 
Now, let me pull this in. Mind you, okay, things get a lot sharper when you optimize the sampling. This is just with generic 4.3 profiles, but still I did that because the sharpness that you're about to see in this picture is nothing, it's, it's, it's much less than the sharpness you could, you, you can achieve when you optimally sample. Now let me pull this in. Okay. I'm going to zoom this bad boy in. Now, the picture on the far left and on the far in the middle, these are two different two chip systems. The picture on the right, and remember this is link blown out. The picture on the left is a stock system. The picture on the right is um, link with no RGB bypass. This is just what you, what you can sort of expect when you don't bypass, but you just edge enhance on a clean system. Stock link on the left, stock link in the middle on another system, and that is a an edge enhanced uh, link on the far right. So, let's take a look. Let me see. Let's see. Give me just a second here. Um, I can show you. Now, that is with generic sampling. Would you guys like to see what this looks like with the 4K? Now, this is a fun, this is a fun screenshot. Uh, the 4K with optimized sampling. I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm sorry, the 4K, I believe, with unoptimized sampling. Be ready for this. That is with the latest. So, okay, the link, the link comparison that you just saw was from several, several months ago before I added a few additional little fixes once I found a little, another little secret and trick with the DAC. What you're seeing on the left is Super Mario 3 All-Stars, and this is an SNES 2 chip. This is a launch model sampled by a RetroTINK 4K. I didn't take this picture. Mark Dildoson of My Life in Gaming took this picture. It really doesn't... I cannot make the two chip any sharper than that. That is a two chip that is not a one chip system. That is a two chip system outputting pixels to a RetroTINK 4K and those are being upsampled by the RetroTINK 4K. Uh, I, and that is a picture taken with a camera. That is not a screen capture. That is a picture taken with a camera. I'll blow it up for you. I can count every pixel. I can count every subpixel. This is a two-chip SNES. That is, that is, that is this model. That is this model from 1990. That is, that is what, that is the state that the two, that my two-chip designs are currently in. And, um, that's it. That's all I have. Oh, I mean, I may have some other things here. Let's see. Um. Um,
Let's see. Okay, here's some cute things. Now, I know a lot of people will appreciate these. Here is a fun game that's a very good benchmark for this. Now, I'm going to ask you, is this picture... Is this picture a one chip or, uh, well, where did I save these? Oh, here we go. Are these pictures, is this a one chip or a two chip? It's a two chip, obviously, because the character's name is two chip. Um, let's see. I'll show you another fun uh, picture. This is with a this is a two chip SNES. This is actually Triforce or Mark Duddleson of My Life in Gaming. This is their launch model Super Famicom with the latest fixes. This has been RGB bypassed in addition to edge enhanced. And this is Earthbound. I don't think Earthbound's ever looked as good on a launch model Super Nintendo or Super Famicom. Let's see. Um, here's a fun one that people often ask about, and I'm sure you guys have seen this on um, Twitter. That's a two-chip. That is a 100% two-chip. Again, this is Mark Duddleson's um, The Triforce of My Life in Gaming. This is their launch model uh, Super Famicom with these fixes. Um, I have... Hold on. Now, do you want to see a one-chip versus two-chip? Do you want to see a one-chip versus two-chip? Okay. I think I have something here. Give me just a second. Let me go through my archives. Right here. Okay, perfect. Okay, so here we have... Here we have... A two-chip system... Versus a one chip system. Now, it's not two chip on the left and one chip on the right, or it's not, it, it could be, it couldn't be. I'll ask you guys which system uh, is. Uh, let me get rid of these borders. Now, that this is a one chip versus two chip. One image is link on a two chip, one image is link on a one chip. Uh, the, I've now I've already shared this picture, so most of you already know this, but interestingly enough, the two chip is on the left. No, the two chip is on the right and the one chip is on the left. The one chip is... There's a few things I'm going to talk about here. 
I want to I want to take this and I'm going to zoom this in just a little bit. I'm sorry if this covers up the chat a little bit, but you'll notice the two chip is on the right and the one chip is on the left. Now, if you zoom in super 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 much more than any more far beyond the capabilities of the human vision, if you zoom in on this, you may see a subtle difference. I really can't buy eye, but let's compare the ears here. I mean, the fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, by the time you view this from a normal size, which is what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to reset this. Let's see, let me reset. By the time you bring this down, and that's even too big, I, I just, I'm sorry. Like, to me, it's imperceptible. The difference is, I have, the DAC on the two chip is very different from the DAC on the one chip. Now, the DAC on the one chip is very prone to oversaturating the video, so it's a little bit darker. The DAC on the two chip, I've got that son of a bitch dialed in beautifully, so... It's outputting a little bit brighter, but not too bright. That's why the image on the right appears a little bit brighter than the image on the left. So, the thing is, the question is, is the one chip better than the two chip in terms of its in terms of video fidelity? I don't think so. I mean, maybe theoretically on paper, but as far as what the limitations of our human vision, do I think that the two chip is is no, absolutely not. I consider them. I, I prefer the two chip over the one chip, and I especially prefer the two chip now over the one chip. I think that everybody. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's that's not snake oil. And listen, if you can't see any appreciable difference in Link being blown up this size to scale on this 1080, 1080p canvas, I'm about to sneeze, hold on. Imagine the lack of, uh, imagine like, you know, Link being this size. Gee, I wonder which one's different. Well, I think Link on the right looks better because the colors are a little more pronounced because the video amplitude is higher. The video amplitude on the left can be fixed just with a simple just with a simple brightness control. You can fix that. But as far as I'm concerned, there is no fucking difference. And the color production on the DAC, I am really massaging that out of this thing. So the colors as, as far as I'm concerned, never mind the amplitude. I think the coloring on the two chip is better. And it's not as flat as the color uh, reproduction for, for the uh, RGB DAC on the one chip is flatter than the, 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 the DAC on the two chip, in my opinion. I, I think that the two chip is a little more poppy. I think that the two chip strength is, if you have a stock two chip versus a stock one chip, obviously the one chip is a lot cleaner, it's a lot less image noise. Uh, the, the problem, though, is the main discrepancy, as far as I'm concerned, is the color fidelity. The colors just look better coming off of the two chip DAC. They're not as flat. They're not muted. This will work on a CPU-01 board. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what... You, well, no, that's not what you're looking at. Uh, here you go. CPU-01 board. I'll show it again. How many... Let me ask you. How many people are here... How many of you that are here didn't see... The in, like the sort of the demo of the installation of this. Okay, so there's a f there are a few people. Okay, so all right, let's. Talk, I'm going to do this one one more time for everybody. All right, okay, 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 okay. So two chip installation. What is it going to entail? Not much across all of these different revisions. I've got all of these boards here. All of these different boards, this mod will work across all revisions, and it's wireless. It involves installing a QSB. Now, this is a launch model CPU-01. Let me get this out of the way. Whoops. Zoom in just a bit here. It's good. It, revol it, re it, re it, it all revolves around the QSB, 
which installs like so, which is going to actually involve or um, add additional decoupling that will help performance. And then when you have this, we have this beautifully modularly design, uh, designed edge enhancer. This installs onto the um, interposer like this. You have these little castellated edges here. I'll zoom in so you can see that. See, it's very simple. Just line it up. I've got this goopy stuff all over the place, but you just line it up like that. It takes about two seconds. Boom, it's lined up. Solder the castellated edges across, you're done. If you don't want an RGB bypass, this is it. You don't have to remove any components. You don't have to do anything. This is the extent of your responsibilities, and this will uh, add additional decoupling for the PPU, the CPU, and the work RAM, and the second PPU, both PPUs, and it will sharpen the video. If you want to take it a step further, which I recommend because the video sucks, you can install a bypass, which is very similar to all of my other bypasses. You just fit the, you fit the module over the uh, multi-out pins. We have an empty uh, footprint here, but this is for an FPC connector, and guess what? You connect RGB lines from this connector all the way down to the connector that's going to be fitted on the interposer, making this wireless. You don't have to tin, strip, cut any wiring, and that's it. That's the installation. Of course, if you're going to do the RGB bypass, there are just a few capacitors here. There are some uh, surface mount components that you just quickly remove, just like doing a one-chip bypass. It's very simple. Uh, but that is the... Um, that is what I've been spending all this damn time on. Again, this is for the launch model. We have, um, there's two QSBs for American systems. You've got this QSB right here, and then you have somewhere around here. I don't know what I did with it. I don't know what the hell I did with it. Let me see. I think I got some over here. I do. So, two QSBs will cover all revisions. You just have to open your system and to know which version you have. This QSB is for launch model systems. This QSB is for every other revision of the Super Nintendo ever released in Japan or the United States. Now that installs very simply too. I will show you that. Let me show a board here that I've already prepped for that so that it makes sense. Oh, perfect. Here we go. So... GPM revisions, as you can see, the interposer says it supports GPM revisions, RGB revisions, APU revisions, 01 and 02, the X. And the interposer, all of these revisions have these, um, ha have pretty much the same um, layout here. So all you have to do is you see these three vias right here. It's very simple. You bring your new interposer in line it up make sure you've got silver showing which we uh which we do there that's pretty good solder it into place solder all of your uh around your castellated edges here where these capacitors are and then once again the rgb uh, i'm sorry the edge enhancer fits on top of the interposer like that you solder that in you're done same business across all revisions PAL systems, as far as my knowledge goes, PAL Super Nintendos only had two revisions, and those revisions, for the most part, are identical. Those systems are the SNES P01. Now, Europe has this, uh, this revision, and Europe also has a CPU-02 revision. These main boards are identical, and the good news for you guys in PAL land... is if i remember how to do this it's been so long jesus this is the interposer that's been prototype printed uh, on paper but pal people will have support so that you will be able to install this onto pal systems the p uh, in snsp just denotes pal and once again same principle edge enhancer installs just like that and boom, you're off to the races. The Edge Enhancer will not affect composite video and S video if you don't RGB bypass. If you do RGB bypass, in order to clean up the video significantly, those formats have to be formatted. But if those are important to you, 
don't RGB bypass. Just install the Edge Enhancer like you see here. You don't have to remove any components. You don't have to add any components other than these two units, and there are no wires. HD Retrovision Cables, HD Retrovision Cables. So I worked with Steve Kulov quite a bit to make sure that there is seamless, perfect compatibility. If you own a pair of Rectal Vision SNES component cables, and if you don't RGB bypass, those are going to work perfect. If you do RGB bypass, those are going to work perfect. There's nothing extra for you to do. When you install the RGB bypass, everything that needs to be done has been done to make sure those cables will work flawlessly and properly within specification. So, I, that, guys, that's it. That's about all I've got. I hope, um, again, if, if you have any, if you have any, um, if you have any questions, I, I can answer a few, and then we'll, we'll close this up. What if your existing Super Famicom does not work with HD retrovision cables? Well, then you have a problem with your Super Famicom that is not a result of the cabling or anything else. Um, you would need to get that serviced. And if it doesn't work before, it's certainly not going to work after. Um, can I arrange for an uh, EU distributor? Yes, I can and I will. So the whole reason I'm working on PAL stuff is because I want my European friends to have access. So European uh, countries will have um, this made available to them. I am working on that, and that will be um, certainly within 2024, hopefully early 2024, uh, my friends in Europe will have access to these kits from reliable and trustworthy sellers. But that's it. That's all I got. I hope... I mean, you guys have been asking me, how does this install? Is it going to be difficult? My goal was to make a very advanced final mod for the Super Nintendo and to make it the easiest to install. Now, I don't know. I don't have data on that yet because you guys haven't got to install it yet. But I believe that this is going to be one of the easiest mods that you can do. There's nothing really to this. There's no wiring to this. There's just putting parts. They're putting uh, boards on parts, soldering and, you know, lining up this QSB. And somebody asked, will the QSB come pre-installed? No, that is your job. So when you order this as a kit, you'll be asked really just one question. What version of the SNES will you be installing this in? And based on your answer, that will determine if you receive a CPU-01 interposer or if you'll receive the uh, interposer that handles everything else. And I, again... Installing the kit is just a matter of coming here, lining up the edge enhancer with the castellated edges. I'll zoom in so you can see this. Just look at the top of the board. You see the top of the board here? See these, see these castellated edges? It's very simple. You just line them up like this. See the white box outline here? It says very simply, install edge enhancer here. Pretty self-explanatory. Line this up, hold it with a finger, make sure you got good alignment, and just solder that in. Australia, I'm going to work hard on that too. 
Australia, I'm going to really focus on. Now, Australia, that is a PAL territory, right? So that's a 50 hertz country. You guys received, uh, you guys probably have, just like everybody else, the European Super Nintendo. So that's something else that I have to keep in the, yep, I have to keep in the mind. I have to keep in my mind. But as far as the Super Nintendo stuff goes, that's that's what I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to show you guys how this worked and what you can do and what you can't do. Again, this will only start as an installation service so I can collect data, I can create these guides, and once I feel comfortable that these guides and that the instruction has been massaged enough so everybody can follow it, that's when I will offer DIY kits and I don't think anybody with even novice soldering experience is going to have any trouble installing these. At least I hope not. That was my whole design focus and intent. What will the pricing be for these kits? I am still waiting on quotes and I'm still waiting on manufacturing costs to come to me in email because there are a few things that I've had to argue with back and forth so I'm not really comfortable talking about that but I can tell you these kits will be priced very competitively to my other kits like everything that I sell is not super expensive so I mean there are th technically there are three different things here well there are technically two different things here three different things to manufacture I would expect this to be right at the same cost of my other stuff maybe a little bit more but nothing outrageous I would plan for 50 million dollars but but plan for a pleasant surprise Is the Edge Enhancer based on... No. No, the Edge Enhancer is not based on any uh, clamped video amplifier. The Texas Instruments uh, driver is a, it is a high... Well, it's, the, the, the THS7374 is a four-line video driver, and I do not use anything like that to um, do what I need to do. No video chips there. Does Bordy's 5-in-1 uh, modding PCB Super CIC get in the way of these wonderful mods of yours? Okay, so look, as far as like, as far as, I've talked about this a little bit, this is the, this is the PAL main board, as long as those boards don't come below this line, you can see the outline of my main board, you're probably going to be okay. But if those boards take up a lot of real estate on the bottom, they may conflict. Now, there's there's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. This is just where this has to live. If you want this to, to continue to be easy to install, and I'm really not interested in changing this, but I have designed this so that I take up as 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 the minimum amount of room, the as as minimum of amount of room. I try to be very space efficient. So I'm using the minimal amount of room that I have to. Okay. Well, I think... I think that we're now. So okay, the uh, uh, Final Fantasy VII. Oh my gosh, what's his name? FF Seven, really nice guy. Uh, his uh, CIC mod. Um, I'm sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. I'm sorry. It only comes down. So all of these mods they connect to this cartridge port, and I was I did some eyeballing, and those look like they only come down about about maybe yay far, which leaves plenty of room. But some of those I've seen they come down considerably, and they take up a big a big chunk of the board and that's a lot of real estate and unfortunately that that may conflict with this now you'll notice though I'm not covering up parts with my design anything that is like in way in the way that in, that's impeding the design you can see that I have very clean and clear cutouts so that all of this is whoops so that I think I can put it back my goodness so that all of this is still plenty serviceable like we have these ceramic caps here and we have these resistors. So I'm not covering anything up, but at the same time, I can't help 
designs that start at the cartridge port and may come down and swing below this. Okay, so that's that's just that is the reality of that. Ah, well, we've talked about PAL. We've talked about um, we've talked about the American systems. Um, I wish I had more to show you. We've looked at comparisons. Um, is there anything else that you guys want to ask? Anything. Anything. Okay, so the Sega Neptune, that's a little off topic, but that's a good question. I, I, w once looking at the housing that's been reproduced for the Neptune, I have been very interested in working on a main board that marries Genesis hardware and 32X hardware into a codified design. Yes, I have been looking at that. Hold on. I have been looking at that and looking into that, and I talked to Renee, uh, who is a uh, Canadian apologist, and we've talked about doing something, and we're, we're talking about it. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Let me get this stuff up here. Oh, Daddy. Ooh, I want you tonight. Okay, so... But, yeah, so Neptune's, Sega Neptune stuff, Neptune stuff, that's something I've been thinking about. Don't know yet, but, you know, my giblets are great. Thank you for asking. But at any rate, I'm sorry, guys. You know, I've been working on this stuff for a long time. I'm sorry this has taken so long, but I don't like half... I don't half-ass these projects. I try to do things with a certain level of precision and care... It, it is what it is. It's taken as long as it has, but I'm I'm fine with that because I think that you guys are going to get a superior... You guys are getting a superior product as a result of all of this extra hard work. So I'm really proud of this. I'm proud of the work that I've done. I'm very thankful. I couldn't have done this without people like Furtech who helped me with, with the decapped PPU2 images. We analyzed the entire DAC. I was able to... Um, to um, determine the DAC structure because of him. Mike Chi, this wouldn't have been half as good without Mike Chi. Dr. Michael Chi has been an integral part of this design, and I fixed a lot of gooned up stupid mistakes that I was going to make because he's much smarter than I am. Even though analog is my forte, everything is Dr. Chi's forte. Because he owns AliExpress, allegedly. So, anyways, um, a lot of people here. I stand on shoulders. This just isn't all me. But, um... This was a lot of fun. Okay, so... Yes, Furtech is a master, and I am so thankful for him, and I'm thankful for Steve Kulov, and I'm thankful for Mike, and I'm thankful for everybody who has helped, um, and uh, the people who've donated things. Uh, Joe Redifer of Nutsack, a game sack, sent a Super Nintendo. Uh, Fenris, uh, uh, Fenris sent a uh, bunch of stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, he's helped tremendously. Um, I'm very grateful. I, I did not do this alone, and I'm very, very thankful. Everyone, please uh, tweet to Mike Chi and tell him that, um, say, Dr. Chi, I understand that you own AliExpress. Okay? Bob has really not done anything, because what has Bob done in his life? Other than acquire diabetes and develop a horse fetish, I don't know. Personally, I've known Bob for many, many, many years. Um, other than being now a troll for Alex Jones and being an Alex Jones underling and working for Alex Jones, I don't know. You know, Bob really hasn't been super involved in this project. The fact is, no, Bob has known about this project, but Bob's not been super involved until... Um, I guess about just a little, little, little while ago. Uh, Bob's been busy. Bob's got a lot of stuff to do. He doesn't have time for me. 
you know, Bob doesn't have time for me when he's, when he's stuck in all that horse. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, at any rate, um, but yeah, so um, a lot of effort here uh, from a lot of different people. So, ah. <sighs> But that's it, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this one. Um, I can tell you that you're gonna be seeing videos very soon, very, very soon, from uh, my life in gaming. You're gonna be seeing a video very soon from Bob, and you're gonna be seeing, um, as far as installation is concerned, I'm going to be doing an installation video as well as um, Tito. Macho Nacho Productions, he will be doing an installation video. So there's going to be quite a bit of coverage on this. And um, it's 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 making its rounds. Those prototype systems have already been sent out. Bob's had his for a long time. Uh, Mark, uh, My Life in Gaming, has had theirs their system for quite a while. Um, actually, I'm not... I, let, me, let me qualify that. Bob has had his SNES for like a few weeks. Bob's not had his for very long. So uh, content is coming. All right, guys, this is it. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. Uh, do, well, let me just get your opinions. Is this, as far as the installation goes, is there anything that you would like would have liked me to do different? I like to poll for feedback. Is there anything you'd like done differently? Uh, do, you, do you agree with this? Do you think, is there anything that you could have imagined to make this um, easier or more streamlined or a little more polished in terms of installing this? I'm just curious. Thank you, Zach69. Merry Christmas to you, too. Have a nice holiday. Well, again, this installation was going to be a pain in the ass for the longest time. So I stopped, regrouped, took everything out, and I redid everything from scratch because this would have been really easy to do had it been one single revision. It had been very easy to do. But I had to satisfy eight different main board types, eight different layouts, and I had to find a way to streamline it. So rather than having eight different, excuse me, rather than having eight different designs, we have two different designs, two different designs to accommodate eight permutations of the same hardware, and the heart of everything is its own independent design that is, whoops, that is, oh, oh yeah, daddy, put it right here. God, get it off there, I'm trying to. The heart of the design is independently its own thing. <sighs> so, like I said, I, the difficulty is simplifying things that aren't simple from the beginning. There was nothing simple about this stuff across eight different revisions to keep things as efficient as possible. So, I am very proud of all of this. Um, uh oh, we lost the. Uh, there's another mod here. We've we've lost. Oh, did I accidentally? No, I didn't accidentally. You intentionally threw it away because you're. Uh, you're a jerk. I am very proud of each of these. I'm very proud of each of these. I think that this is some of my... Um, I'm very proud of this work. I feel like this is... My job and my videos and everything that I've ever done has always been find a way to deliver the information and to present it to people in the easiest, most streamlined, efficient way that you can. And I feel like this is the pinnacle of that for me is in these three or in these four designs, technically speaking. And I'm really proud of it. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. I'm always open to feedback. If you guys think that there's, you know, ever there's something that, you know, would make it easier for you. And if it makes sense, I'm listening. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I'm just trying to do what I think's best. So please, I'm always open to that. 
should you buy the SNES 2 chip or SNES Junior? Well, I'm just going to be honest with you. So up until now, I would have said get the Mini. Now, the Mini's nice because it's smaller, it's easier to deal with, and its bypass is very simple and it's just it's very cheap if you buy it from me. But one chip architectures aren't very well, no. They're very much so compatible, but they have their own quirks. A lot of Capcom games, they don't work correctly because of the way um, the brightness registers in the DAC and how those are assigned and addressed vary. So, in other words, some games you have you have weird horizontal lines that run across, across the heading of the image. Uh, some games, the, the brightness emphasis doesn't work correctly necessarily some games like demon's crest um, have graphical garbage at the heading of the video and some games just don't work at all like super turrican now it may work initially but eventually the game's going to crash it and it, 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 it will inevitably crash so um og architecture blurry poor video output but it's og chipset gets around everything works with everything uh one chip perfectly uh, clean well, it's not perfectly clean but very clean and sharp video output very nice design very nicely designed DAC kind of a clone system because it's an ASIC that glues all these chips into one codified design and it's not implemented the same way therefore there's some compatibility quirks um, the two chip it's big con blurry noisy video we've effectively I fixed that we have fixed that so as long as you're willing to do the mod which you've seen I think the 2-chip is really the way to go. But there's nothing wrong with the 1-chip. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the 1-chip. It's it's great, too. That You're not going wrong either way. I mean, just because one might not be as favorable as the other doesn't mean the other one's crap or is even bad or worse. They're just, they're too, what's your use case? What's your use case and what is your application? Okay. I'm wanting to try some mods. What do you think a good system or mod is to try at first as someone with a with with just a bit of soldering experience? Well, I'll tell you. If you have a little bit of soldering experience, find an old launch model N64. Find um, an old launch model Nintendo 64 and go buy my 30 odd dollar N64 RGB kit. That is a very nice entry level mod that's very cheap and it's simple. And those old analog N64 RGB mods that I created, I will say it until the cows come home, those are comparable to any digital mod that you would spend a lot of money on if you have a good video processor to pipe it through. I think that's a great start. Another great start is if you don't want to spend money on mods, but you have some modding experience, you have some soldering experience, very little, go and find your NES, Game Boy, SNES games, N64 games, that have dead batteries. Go buy some CR2032s, buy some coin cell holders, replace the batteries in your games that have expired batteries. Are there any revisions that your SNES mods won't work with? There are no Nintendo SNES models that this doesn't work with, to my knowledge. PAL is covered. NTSCU, United States is covered. NTSCJ, Japan is covered. The only exception that I know is the Sharp F1 or whatever the television is called that has a Super Famicom integrated. I'm not designing anything for that because, quite frankly, that's a museum piece and it doesn't need touched. Okay, guys, I think that's it. I think we're done. I think everything here is looking great. I'm proud of everyone for showing up. Had a lot of people here. I hope I was able to answer these questions. Um, I hope that this was informative. You guys have been asking, how's this going to work? What's this going to look like? Well, I took some protos here and I've showed you. Let's see what happens. So take care.
God bless. And here in just a couple of weeks, these are going to be made available. So thank you. I think we've got this. Um, I think that, you know, these questions have been answered. Unless you've got anything else, I'll wait like an extra 20 seconds here. Okay. Okay. No real questions, guys. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon. God bless. Keep a lookout on this stuff. I may have some more updates soon, and I'll catch you later. Take it easy.